You know, I've actually recorded two videos about eight times trying to get the right type of content out and the right type of feel, but in the end, I've decided to just merge it into one. So here it is. Soraya Tech sent me some resin, and I used that to compare the Photon D2 with the Sonic Mini 8K. So here we have them head to head using some awesome Soraya Tech resin. And with that, hi, I'm Ross, and this is Fohammer Videos. So this all started with my Photon D2 review, where one user commented, try some Soraya Tech resin, and then Soraya Tech resin went, try some Soraya Tech resin. And I said, I will if you send me some. So they sent me some, which means yes, this is a sponsored video sponsored by Soraya Tech, but that doesn't mean I can't say what I want to say about the resin. So Soraya Tech sent me three resins and then I went out and bought a fourth that I've not had a chance to test yet. The first one of those is the Sculpt resin, which I'm just going to apologize for. I couldn't get this working without it being too brittle and breaking the XP finders tests that I've been running on the printer. This is a common issue with more detailed resins, especially when you print them at temperatures lower than they're meant to operate at. They just end up being really brittle. And this is a really high resolution resin and I'm printing in my garage where it's frequently less than 15 degrees Celsius. Celsius. So sorry guys, until it's summer next year, I can't say anything about your sculpt resin. So that leaves us with the fast resin, the tenacious resin and the clear resin, the third of which I bought, but again, haven't tested it, gonna save that for another video. So I tried the Sculpt resin first because this was the one I could get working. And the best way to describe it is I could liken this directly to Frozen Zone Aqua Grey 8K resin. It's a very similar color. It has a, well, it has an identical exposure time to get the best results out of it. And the finish is nigh on identical. I can't tell a difference apart from a slight hue shift in the gray where the Soraya Tech's an ever so slightly darker and cooler blue tone than the Frozen 8K resin. As for the difference in prints between the Frozen 8K Mini and the Photon D2, well, this is where it actually showed that the smoothness of the results on the Frozen Mini 8K are far better than what you get on the Photon D2. The DLP does make a much more grainy texture on the surface because it's much more direct. But I'm still saying on Fohammer.com that this is the best printer for miniatures, and the reason for that I'll explain as we go through further. Back to the resin though, I would definitely say that for those of you out there struggling to get your hands on the Frozen 8K grey resin, just get this instead. I can't see a difference between them, and I know people have struggled to get the 8K resin because of either shipping delays, shipping fees, sometimes they're prohibitive, especially in certain parts of the world. It costs me an arm and a leg to get it here in the UK. But this Soraya Tech's readily available around the world, and it's cheaper. Considering I can't tell a difference in both quality and general overall feel and texture when I've finished printing with it, then yeah, definitely go and buy this stuff. Let me know down in the comments if you agree that it's all but the same. Back to the printers. So when we look at a print off the Sonic Mini 8K, you can see an incredible amount of detail on here, and it's really good. The downside of LCD printers in general is because they project light through a blocked out area of a screen, the light doesn't travel directly upwards towards the build plate. It also bleeds outwards a little bit. So you will find no matter what you get in resolution when it comes to an LCD printer, there'll be that slight outward bleed. Now on the Sonic Mini 8K, you can hardly really see that because the layers are so tiny, so thin at 0.02 microns seems to be the average, but also because of the detail of the 8K screen in that small area, because of the outward bleed, the resolution is much more than the compensation you need in order to actually see it. Nevertheless, it is still there slightly. So with LCD printers, what you find you need is that perfect exposure setting. If it was too low, then you'd get issues like peeling layers or failing supports. But if it's too high, then you get overexposures. So any multi-part pieces that connect can be bloated and they won't connect together, requiring more sanding. But you can also get other issues because it rounds off the edges of areas that should be sharp. With the resolution on the Sonic Mini 8K, that perfect exposure setting generally tends to be within one tenth or even one fifth of a second. But when we look at a DLP print up close, even though the resolution is now improved over the Photon Ultra, you can still see a lot of grain and texture in the surface. But I wanna remind you right here and show you that when you zoom out or just move the model away from your face, can your eye even tell the difference? 
The place where this really comes into being a problem is when you're painting miniatures, especially when you're using painting techniques that I've mentioned before, like dry brushing and washers. Dry brushing will pick up the highlights of a model, all the raised parts, and washers will sit in all the recesses. If you have more grain on the surface of a model, then the washers will sit in those extra recesses and the exposed, the more outer sticky parts of the model that have been printed by the DLP, the jagged edges, they're going to be picked up by a dry brush. But once you apply anti-aliasing to prints on the D2 or the Ultra, you'll find that most of these jagged edges and recesses are smoothed out anyway, and they are nigh on imperceivable when you've applied your first layer of primer. The benefit here is those sharp edges still remain super sharp because the light from a DLP projector is a lot more direct and straight. And don't go thinking something like the Sonic Mini 8K does in fact eradicate every single layer and voxel line before you apply primer, because when you look up close, they are still there. So to understand why I'm still saying that the D2 is better for miniature printers, well, let's move on to the other resin that Soraya Tech sent me so we can go into it. It was actually when using Soraya Tech's Tenacious Resin that it finally clicked with me what the benefit of the D2 and the Ultra printers are when it comes to printing miniatures. It's got a much wider range for a successful exposure. Now Soraya Tech's Tenacious Resin is a weird beast in itself. The one that I got comes in a semi-transparent black, but when it cures, it needs a much, much higher exposure time and it cures to like a rubbery texture. When I brought this out of my cleaning vat, it kind of had a jelly-like substance and feel to it. It was really weird, but at the same time, kind of fun to work with. Now I've said several times that the reason I don't like the 8K resin is because it's far too brittle for miniatures. It's fine if you're only ever going to paint them and display them on a shelf, but if you ever want to actually use them in a game, then these things are liable to break in your bag just transporting them to the event. And Soraya Tech's fast resin is marginally different here. It's ever so slightly hardier, but give it a few days after it's cured and you'll find exactly the same. But the Tenacious Resin, you could print something and bounce this across the room and it's unlikely to break. You'll get a bend at most unless you snap or purposely tear apart from your model. And it's worth noting that the way they promote this is not to actually print with it directly, but to mix in only 5 or 10% with any other resin to give it some of those hardier properties. But much like mixing paint when you're painting models, I can't be bothered to do this, so I just printed with it directly. Now it actually surprised me the exposure time needed for this resin. I actually had to go up to 7 seconds and higher in order to get it to print. Some of my earlier exposure tests with the Sonic Mini 8K caused this model to completely fail and half of it just disappeared and ended up stuck to the bottom of the build plate and my FEP. Now, as I said before, with the Sonic Mini 8K and all other LCD printers, you've got to find that sweet spot for exposure. So that point is where it's not underexposed and it's not overexposed. And you can get various exposure finders online in order to test this and get your correct settings. But with the DLP printers, that range is so wide for a successful print that it just makes everything so much easier. Let's say, for example, you've got an exposure time of 1.7 seconds on a DLP printer, which is exactly what I use on my Photon D2. You can actually increase that exposure time by several seconds and still have incredibly sharp and detailed prints. And that's because the DLP technology directs light in so much more of a straight line that you don't get any of that outward bleed or bloat. Put simply, it's so much easier to set up and use. And despite the price point, that kind of makes it one of the best beginner 3D printers you can possibly buy. So look, deciding between these two printers is really, really difficult to do at the moment, and I understand why. So let's break it down into simple terms so you can make an informed decision. In my opinion, if you are a display painter, somebody who wants to print miniatures and put them in a display cabinet, then yeah, the Sonic Mini 8K is definitely the way to go. It has the best resolution, and yeah, you're gonna lose a little bit of sharpness, but to be honest, your prints are gonna be smoother overall. But just beware that some of the resins you use with it, especially the resin that comes with it, or that's meant for it, that's the 8K resin from Frozen, it is quite brittle, so therefore you're not gonna be wanting to use this to take more 
models to a game with a friend or a tournament. But if you're more of a gaming hobbyist and you like to paint your miniatures by giving it a coat of red, a couple of washes and calling it done, then you're going to need some of the hardier resins. And for that, you're generally going to want some higher exposure times. So this is where something like the Photon D2 really comes in handy. If you're not quite bothered about that slight, ever so slight detail trade off when it comes down to surface level texture, maybe you can't even paint in coats that thin, then the D2 is really good because once you get your minimum exposure time in, you can go several seconds above that and you don't need to worry about losing detail on prints anywhere near as much. So that's it guys, I hope this has helped you in some way make more of an informed decision and has explained why I think the Ultra is the better printer for miniatures, assuming you're gaming with your miniatures, which most of the people are who read our site. Please check out some of the resins from our sponsor, Soraya Tech. Once again, I'll say that their fast resin is directly comparable, cheaper and more accessible than the Frozen Sonic Minis Aqua 8K Grey resin. Oof, that's a mouthful. You can also try some of their Tenacious Resin and maybe have a go at what they have recommended to do and drop 5 or 10% of this in with whatever resin you currently use just to make it a bit hardier. But be aware that you're going to need to mix it thoroughly and you also need to increase or reduce your exposure times accordingly. I'll drop links to all of these products in the comments down below. I want to do a huge thanks to our patrons who sponsor these videos and end up helping us create more content. You can get on board with that by once again following the link in the description. I've got the clear resin video to do in the future, but I need to find a good way of approaching that. So if you've got a project that you think I should pick up with the clear resin, then please let me know down in the comments. But that's all from me. I'll see you guys next time. Fohammer out.